Now, native peoples throughout, and we're going to be learning in this class, the native peoples throughout are going to be building churches, just like the missions that you see around here in California or, or in Arizona or in New Mexico or Texas. Um, native peoples will build churches throughout the Western Hemisphere, and just as easily they will burn them in an instant when priests or the friars became overzealous and oppressive. So every church has a history of being built and being burnt and being rebuilt. Now Franciscans are ultimately going to come into conflict with those who are involved in the material aspect, the Spanish elite. In fact, they will describe the Spanish elite with contempt. The Franciscans are going to come around and challenge the Spanish elite, because the Spanish elite, according to them, they were money-grubbing, wine-bibbing, and horse-riding ways. The materialism of the Spanish elite just interfered with the conversion process. So a movement to end the encomienda was initiated by the church. Actually, it was initiated by the Franciscans. This was a movement to end the exploitation of labor. And it was aided by the onslaught of epidemic diseases. In 1519, smallpox disease uh, uh, that decimated Mexico City. This was deliberately done by Cortez. Uh, he was, uh, it was called biological warfare, eliminate the population through disease. The other, there was another epidemic, uh, was called uh, Cocodlitzli in Nahuatl between 1545 and 1548, devastated the population. And then there was another epidemic in 1576 and 77. It was known as Matlasawatl. So the crown is going to introduce a new form of coerced labor. They're going to change it and they're going to call it repartimiento. Repartimiento. No longer could Spanish landowners inherit native workers through the encomienda. The idea was to get rid of the encomienda because the encomienda proved to be uh, totally corrupt. But it didn't mean that it was over with. It's just that wherever the Franciscans were, they were able to impart the repartimiento, what meant, meant that you repart workers. Personal service was suppressed. Tributary rights were confined to goods, cash, and basic foodstuffs. And labor is going to be placed under royal control via the departamento. So now you had to go and petition specifically what you wanted to use native labor forces for in the material conquest. All right. So <clears throat> that's the spiritual conquest. We're going to go back to the movie The Mission. And we're going to witness a debate over humanity. And this is what made The Mission uh, such an uh, important film in the 1980s because the debate was that Brazil was moving in and expanding into the Amazonian region and committing genocide, as it still continues to do, against native populations so that cattle production can continue and the felling of the rainforest continues. So in the 1980s, the felling of the rainforest was in earnest, just like today, the felling of the rainforest continues. And for what? For what? For hamburger, because on every corner of every market is hamburger. That's the cheapest way to feed massive amounts of populations throughout the world. So the cattle industry is just taking over uh, and causing tremendous climate change. Uh, so let's appreciate, uh, back in the 1980s, this particular film, The Mission, was designed to enhance the awareness of people's, uh, uh, of what was happening in the Amazon. And they went to the, the Guarani. That's what's so awesome is that the Guarani, they don't need costume design. They're, they are, uh, 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 they were approached because they were being decimated. Uh, they were losing their land base. Uh, it's, today's modern film, I guess, that matches that is Avatar. Because Avatar was another means by which Hollywood could at least show what's still going on in the Amazon. But uh, people's appetite for hamburger is just... Continuous, and I, I'm guilty of that because I like I like hamburgers, I like uh, especially In-N-Out burgers. But uh, you know that's my I have to transform myself um, with regards to my own consumption. It's leading to climate change because animal uh, cattle is is producing uh, climate change, is creating climate change. But um, let's appreciate something with regards. Let's go back to this movie and let's witness a debate over humanity. Uh, only the debate pits the Jesuits 
against Spanish slave raiders who are assisting Portuguese expansion. So let me just catch you up to what's happening because this is a debate that was occurring between Brazil and the Spanish Empire, between Portugal and the Spanish Empire because they have to carve out a boundary. And if you take a look at today's boundary between Brazil and Venezuela and Colombia and Ecuador and, uh, and then uh, Paraguay or Uruguay all the way down, that, they're negotiating that border at this time and that's what the, the mission is all about. Um, there's a land, a, a border, uh, I, I think it's between Ecuador or, or, or Venezuela and, and Brazil. And so uh, the Portuguese and the uh, uh, Spanish are involved in trying to settle where the border is going to be. And so the church is caught in the middle. Uh, where are they going to build the missions? And so, of course, slavery supposedly has been abolished in, 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 uh, uh, through the repartimiento uh, in, in Spain, but not in Portugal. Portugal continues the slave trade. So slavery. So you're going to witness um, uh, the Spanish, in theory, had abolished slavery. The Portuguese did not. Now, the Portuguese and the Spanish in 1750 are negotiating and demarcating the border between the colonies of Spain and Portugal, um, Portuguese Brazil. So in the clip, what's going to happen is we're going to see Robert De Niro, whereas in the first clip, he was a slave raider for the, the Spanish because they were selling slaves to the Portuguese. Robert De Niro has now switched sides. Now he's a missionary. He's, he's part of the church. And the reason why he switched sides was if you noticed when he was coming into town, he saw his wife and, he, and he, he waved to his wife. Well, his wife was having an affair with his brother. And so when he finds out about that in the film, he's going to murder his, his brother. And he's going to seek repentance for that death that now he's going to commit himself and join the Jesuits and offer his life up to a life of servitude under the Lord. So he becomes involved in the spiritual conversion of the Guarani. So in the film clip, a cardinal is called out to determine what to do with the missions that were caught in the border dispute. And this is where we're going to go to, to understand uh, the debate. But just listen to the debate and recognize, again, in the debate, how they're playing out the fact that Native peoples are not even considered as human beings. And this is the key, because um, even though the scene recreates the middle of the 18th century, this debate was formed in Mexico and the Caribbean and upon arrival uh, of, of Columbus and Cortez. Columbus in the Caribbean and Cortez in Mexico. And this has been a debate, well, all the way to today about native populations.